Okay. All right. So good morning once again. Um, glad that all of you all can be here. Yeah, I'm I'm here live with the students over here. It's lovely to see all of them here. All right. So we'll uh, get started. Let's just start with a word of prayer and uh, we'll move right into class. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your love over us. Thank you that, um, Lord, you have uh, shown us your love, Lord, through so many ways. Thank you that we are here this morning once again to look back at the institution of marriage that you created. Father, even as we look at an important aspect of marriage, we pray that um, you will open our hearts, you will correct our ways, you will align us, Lord, to your word. Heal our hearts. We pray, God, even as we relate with others, Lord, that we will show the love and the glory of God to those around. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So uh, maybe just a quick recap of what we did the last week uh, before we move ahead. So any, any of you would just like to um, share what uh, we did last week, what, what is one of the chapters that we did last week. So either the students here or anyone online could just uh, share. How we learn to um, live out of, um, I mean, to live Christ-like. And through um, knowing our identity in Christ, in order to live uh, Christ-like as well, and also to um, to walk in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Ren. Anybody else? Anything else that uh, stood out for you, specifically on what we learned? Even the online students could could share what you found was relevant, what was important. Brother? We also learned about the renewing of the mind. Renewing of the mind. OK. Yes, we spoke about how yeah. we. Yeah. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Constantly meditating God's word and that meditating helps us to speak peace to our situations. So yeah. otherwise we get into other like our own flesh and then cannot be joyful. So mm -hmm. constant renewing of that was very helpful. Okay, nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. So today we're going to be looking at uh, uh, we till till chapter five till what we've done. We specifically looked at building at uh, at having a basis for marriage, how God designed marriage. So today we're going to be looking at certain elements in marriage. What is what are important aspects or elements that we need to focus on in marriage, and we're going to be. Uh, looking around four or five of those important elements and one of that is communication okay so when we look at communication it's it's an essential um, uh, aspect of building a strong relationship right without communicating can we can we have a relationship right no Right? You need to communicate. You need to listen. You need to hear. You need to be able to address your thoughts and your ideas and be able to uh, listen to other people's thoughts and ideas. So that's what really builds, um, builds a marriage. So when we're looking at um, um, marriage in itself, we're looking at communication as a building block of marriage. Okay? Uh, now, um, a certain aspect of communication. We have different styles of communication. We all um, communicate differently. So there may be some people who are able to express just their thoughts, right? Or some are able to express their feelings, or some may be able to express just 
factual da data or details, right? So we're going to be looking at what is really important in marriage. So um, it, when when you're let's let's for that let's look at different levels of communication. So the first one that you're looking at is a casual sense of communication. Who would you have a casual communication with? Okay, a casual communication generally happens with people you just know as acquaintances, like your milkman, like your shopkeeper, right? So what are you going to? What do you? What are you just? What are you going to do? You're just saying, "Hi, Bicep, how are you? I want one liter of milk." You pay the money and you come out, right? Or uh, someone maybe some, uh, help in your house. You're saying, "Okay, just clean the house over here, there." You know, uh, the dishes need to be washed. Or this is how much of uh, food that you need to make. It's a very casual communication. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so what we're doing there is we're not really sharing too much. We're sharing very, very little. It's a sad thing that unfortunately there are a lot of marriages that are like that. It's just factual. It's just transactional. You just say what you need to. It's a very casual conversation. Right? I'm going for work. Pick up the children at 10 o'clock. Right? The dog needs to be fed. And we have to go to church at 10. Okay, when we come back. right? And that is a really sad state of affairs of, of communication that happens. What's the next level of communication? It's what we call as a professional, professional communication. So in a professional communication, your communication is sharing a lot more of things. You're sharing a lot more of ideas. You're sharing a lot more of thoughts. It's, it, it's probably a task that you need to do, that you're talking about that task in a, uh, in a greater way. right? So it's about facts, it's ideas, it's thoughts, and or it's certain decisions that you may need to make. Okay? So professional communication in marriage may sound something like, uh, you know, which school do we put the children in? Right? So you, you're actually going to find out details of that and then and looking at, at the schools. Or um, uh, maybe which house are we going to buy? What are the things that we need to buy? So there's a lot of ideas that, that's sharing. But then that stops at that. Okay. The next, come, next comes is friendship. Now, in friendship is where you go to a much deeper level of communication. Right, there is an there is a sharing of ideas, there's a sharing of thoughts, there's a sharing of feelings. There is uh, uh, you're deliberating certain things, certain things together. So there is also a freedom there, freedom to be able to share your own beliefs, share your own thoughts, your dreams, and uh, at at certain points of time, there's also people are able to correct one another through that. So it's more of a friendship that you build. Okay. The most ideal kind of communication for marriage is what we say is an intimate level of communication. So what's the difference between intimate communication and friendship? What do you all think is a uh, difference between intimate and friendship? Even the online students, you could also uh, feel free to talk. OK? Yeah. What's the difference between intimate and friendship? Intimate level of communication and friendship. Okay. Like um, when it comes to friendship conversations, we'll wait for that person to come and share to us or we'll respect their boundaries. But when it comes to uh, intimate, I feel like we take that initiative, just go. Okay. It's a little bit. Higher, like more step than friendship. A one step higher than than a friendship. Okay, wonderful. So, one of the difference, Prince, you have something to say? No. What do you think is a difference between intimate and uh, friendship? Like, I like as what Prince brother said. Uh, what Prince brother said, like okay, one step like forward. It huh. means from my perspective, like us, main thing is in. Friendship will share something, but in intimate friendship coming to like that person knows most of the secret of us. Okay. Like there is a way of uh, intimate friendship. And if we are an intimate friend of that person, hmm. we know what is the secret of him also. Okay. Like, uh, 
most of the other people don't know hmm. that two people knows okay okay they see everything okay so one of the biggest difference in intimate uh, communication is the fact that you can share and be vulnerable that is you can absolutely be honest and open about whatever you're feeling whatever you're thinking whatever your ideas are you can be absolutely free without that fear of judgment without the fear that someone will say you know you can't think like this or you shouldn't be feeling like this it's that openness that you have the complete openness complete bearing of of your ideas thoughts feelings all of that is what makes an intimate conversation okay and in marriage that's what is the most ideal level of communication that you're looking at where you are sharing everything of who you are and what you're thinking what you're feeling and what you hope for what you dream for is what you would do in an intimate communication now that's something that how does communication build does it happen just like that it happens over time it happens the more and more you communicate it's more and more that you build that level of intimacy so when you're looking at a let's say a friend that you know you would have initially just met with each other and spoken about their names and their whereabouts where they come from right and slowly you're talking about your ideas your thoughts and you're talking about certain certain of your feelings and then you get into a lot more of vulnerability okay and marriage is is important for marriage to come to that place of intimacy is what is needed okay unfortunately we do see a lot of marriages staying at the professional a casual level okay but it is to grow in intimacy so that it builds marriage in itself okay um now uh, if these principles that we were talking about although it is a lot to do with the husband and wife you can think of it even in the way that you deal with your children okay in parents to children is where you can build intimacy okay now for um in order that we have a meaningful communication there are three important things aspects of communication that we need to look at so which is time trust and transparency so we look at each of this a little bit more in detail so for a communication to be meaningful you need to spend time you need to feel a sense of trust and you need to have the sense of openness or transparency in order to build that communication to that intimate level okay so let's look at time so in marriage it's extremely important to set aside time in a day um uh, you know in a day is absolutely wonderful but if not at least in one or two or three days we're setting aside time where you're able to communicate and talk with each other okay so what what are you doing in that po point of a time so you may be just it can be something that you're doing together it's either cooking a meal or you know having a walk or eating together or doing an activity together setting aside some time with your spouse is a very healthy practice okay it also needs to be at a time when you have the energy so often what what happens especially when you know when we are different there may be some people who are early morning risers some who are who sleep late right so you cannot set a time of communicate communication in these two times because one of them will be sleeping right so you set a time that is most useful where people where both members of the marriage are able to engage in a meaningful and a yeah and 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 a way that builds that communication okay now this is something that needs to be done intentionally because as as you as we all know life is busy so we're all um you know running from pillar to post and if you don't set aside time it doesn't happen like even for the, some of you who may be in bible college who aren't in who aren't married you know just to be able to see your friend is something you'll have to call up and say hey you know let's meet up together and uh you know let's have a coffee together it's an intentional time and so also in marriage it just doesn't happen it doesn't happen automatically it's something that you do structuring your day structuring your time you're making it as intentional as possible okay are you all with me all right okay so 
um, when you are having that time together, uh, often the the time that that we're we're together sometimes goes in looking at important things that need to be done. The to do list, right? Maybe it's. Uh, you know, you know how much of the whether the bills are paid, whether the whether the children's meetings, uh, you know, school meetings have been gone through. Are there purchases that's made? That's all professional talk, right? But to keep aside that professional talk and spend some time to be able to uh, discuss and look at more intimate levels of communication and also it's he healthy to also plan longer periods of time when you're taking a vacation taking two three days off just to be able to spend that time with one another so that's what we we're looking at when we're saying time so this this meaningful and healthy communication that's that requires time that requires intention that requires effort okay all right next one is trust okay what is when you're saying how do you build somebody's trust? How do you think you build somebody's trust? Okay, even the online students can answer. How do you build somebody's trust? Or how do you build trust? Um, so maybe they might uh, give you a responsibility or something to do, and you do it really well. Mm. Then maybe that trust grows later and later. Okay. All right. Okay. So when, when someone does something that you give them, a task that you give them, a responsibility, they do it faithfully. Okay. So that's how you earn somebody's trust. Okay. How, uh, how do you give trust to someone? How do you give trust some, to someone? By keeping your word. Okay. Wonderful. All right. How else do you give trust? Okay. Okay. By being faithful or just being there, present. Okay. All right. Now, in a marriage relationship, trust needs to be earned and it also needs to be given. So what is earned? Trust being earned is that you're doing things in such a way that someone can depend on you and trust on you, trust you. Okay. And giving trust is where you are being dependable when you are there to do something for others. So that's so in a marriage relationship, that's important to be able to earn your trust, earn trust, as well as to give trust. Now, uh, learning to trust another person is you are telling them that uh, or you're helping them gain confidence about who you are and what you say you will do. Okay, You're helping them gain confidence and that that ability or that assurance that they have that if I have done or said or given something to this person, they will they will do it. Okay, so that's what earning tr um, uh, earning trust is. You also giving trust when you are keeping your end of your promise, so keeping your end of the of the bargain, right? And and ensuring that whatever you've said, you're also doing. So that's important to do. Um, can a marriage be effectively built if there is no trust? No. Okay, so what are some uh, situations that you all have come across where trust is broken in a marriage? Okay, uh, Radha says when, when people hide something, okay, hide important information, yes, trust gets broken. What are other situations where trust gets broken? Okay, talking behind their back. So you're you're saying something about them to others uh, without them knowing. Maybe an information. Okay, all right. Anything else? Okay, so some personal information that is made public. Excellent, wonderful. Shira says when people lie again and again. Okay, any other situations where trust is lost? Okay. Uh huh. Guarded. 
you say got it we you're not giving uh, right information or okay all right someone says uh, insult when you okay when there is insecurity about each other okay uh, nina says insult what about infidelity that is when they're in either some kind of extramarital affair does does trust break there yeah yeah that's right infidelity is when when you're when you're uh, moving away from your marriage and having a relationship with somebody else outside of marriage that's what infidelity is also when um, um when personal things are shared maybe you know let's say the husband and wife are having a fight and the wife or the husband takes this personal information to somebody else like to parents right that will break trust no without like for example um they're having maybe they had a huge fight at home all right and probably there was some exchange of words and maybe there was uh, um, some personal things that were shared and this personal things is taken out from the two sim to the parents is that a betrayal of trust okay it can be a betrayal of trust right because what should have been sorted there uh, is going to the parents without maybe the permission of the other spouse right so that some that can also become a uh, an issue of trust so without trust a marriage cannot work a marriage doesn't work uh, well so it it is important that a husband and wife need to be able to trust um, each other not just with with the information that they share but also with any kind of content right or even with the character even even their uh, this the way that they bring about their character is what you may need uh, to have trust so there must be trust that whatever is shared stays in confidence within the marriage okay uh, there must also be trust that that whatever you're sharing i i am sure you all would have probably come across this in some relationship or the other that you've shared something very personal to a friend but that personal information like i think he said has been made public right and that can be very very <clears throat> betraying right so even in marriage what is personally shared you go and take it to either your parents or your in-laws that could also be a break of break of trust or when you're bringing back this personal information in between a conflict right so maybe you know in your vulnerability you have probably said something to your spouse and when he or she is angry he brings it anyway you're like this you told me that you were like this at that time and so when you bring out that kind of information during a fight that can also break a lot of trust and it, it the, the there are barriers in communication okay what about transparency transparency is something where you're able to really share your innermost thoughts and your feelings um your dreams and and that also takes time to build it's not something that happens quickly it happens with time it happens with trust and as a result there is transparency okay now um it's uh, if if you look at page uh, 70 uh, it's that's what's in the um, uh in the in the digital books but for those of you who have books it's 73 okay so if you look at page 73 there is a there is a small um a table that shows how good you are at communication so i want you to spend like 2 minutes or 3 minutes just quickly filling that up because it gives you a good idea of how you are in your communication okay so it's a scale uh one is never two is sometimes three is often four is most most often five is always true so rate what you feel about your communication um between you and your spouse if you're married if you're not married it's okay between you and a friend okay because the way that you communicate to a very good friend is probably the way that you're going to communicate to your spouse also okay so spend 2 3 minutes uh to quickly do that okay it'll help you to understand
Okay, so um, anybody would like to share something that uh, is evident to them that they have to work work on? Any one of those that you may need to work on? E-learning, I'm sorry, online students, anything that you saw in those items that you feel you must work on? Students here, what do you oh, think? Yeah, I would say the third one, to express. Feel free to express yourself. OK. All right. So this is a good, it's like a check to show you how good you are at your communication. OK? Because uh, if you do find that you have a low score, it's a good thing to start working on it right away. Don't wait till you're married. Okay, for those of you who are not married here. Okay, so um, uh, what, is, what does communication do and how does communication build a good marriage? And let's just look at a few things as to what um, communication means and how it helps marriage in several ways, okay? One of the things that communication does is it helps you to know and understand each other, right? So you're actually talking about different things um, and it's only when you talk that you that you understand, right? Um, for example, recently we just had our marriage conference, and there were certain things that you know we were talking. My husband and I were talking at part of the thing, and it was something that we I think we've never spoken about, right? But it made it made uh, it, it was a very refreshing time just to talk about something that meant a lot to us, and it really helped us understand what we liked or what kind of people we are. So it helps you know and understand each other. Communication can help you to work together as a team. OK? Uh, and how does that happen? How does, how does it help you to work as a team? Think of, uh, think of uh, let's say, a husband and wife stands in a kitchen and does, makes a meal. Do you need to communicate? Yes. Yeah, otherwise, your biryani will have too much of salt or it will have maybe sugar instead, right? Right. So you, unless you communicate, hey, I've done this part of it, this needs to be done, or it needs to be done like this. So it needs, so it, I've just taken a very simple example of maybe cooking. But in the greater things of life also, you need to work together as a team. You need communication to work as a team. OK. Communication is needed because it helps you to support one another. It helps you to support each other, right, at times of illness, times of hardships, times of conflicts, times of stress, you're there supporting and encouraging each other, right? How do you support and encourage somebody? What, what do you, what words do you use? Okay, saying something positive about them. Okay, say, hey, I believe in you, you can do this. It's not a big thing. Come on, I'm there with you, right? So that's, she always does that? OK, all right. So you support and you encourage, you nurture. You say, see, I, I trust you can do it. You did it last time. Or when, you know, last time you got 20 out of 20 for your marks. And decide, it's OK, we'll figure it out. So that's how you support and encourage each other, OK? You also, um, uh, communication is very important to resolve conflicts, right? Uh, and this is something that we're going to be looking at next uh, next to next class about how do we resolve conflicts and how communication is important. Uh, without communication, um, you may not be able to iron out problems, right? Especially if there are. Um, so so let's say, you know, you're newly married, and your spouse has made a breakfast for you. Okay. And you go up and say, I don't want to eat this. Right? And that's it. You're not saying anything more. If you don't communicate that, I don't know, dosa or idli has a bad effect on your stomach, what would happen? What would your spouse think? They would take it very personally. Yeah? Right? They'll say, OK, they don't like my cooking. She, he doesn't like me. She doesn't like me. Didn't want to get married to me. I mean, you can go into so many different things, right? So you resolve issues by communicating, by actually sharing where you're at, what your um, preferences are, what is your 
perspectives, what your opinion is. And the more that you share, you're building a better uh, working together. So when conflicts arise, communication is something that helps you work through certain differences. Okay, Because a lot of misunderstanding happens in conflicts because we don't communicate. Right? A lot of misunderstandings happen. Um, uh, probably, maybe I'll bring about an example to, to make that clearer. Um, uh, you know, uh, especially when we make decisions. Uh, let's say you're making a decision about wanting to buy a vehicle. And one person wants to buy a two-wheeler, the other wants to buy a four-wheeler, right? And if you don't, if you just stand on that and say, no, I want a two-wheeler, I want a four-wheeler, without actually talking about the reasons why you think a two-wheeler is needed or a four-wheeler is needed, you're not really understanding what, where they're coming from, OK? So the person with a two-wheeler will say, you know, it's easiest to get on the road with that because, uh, you know, with the traffic in Bangalore, that's probably the easiest thing. But the person who wants the car will say, no, you know, I, I've fallen 10 times on a scooter and I'm really fearful about that. I want a car. I like a car because it makes me feel safe. So it's just communicating, right? And so a lot of this builds understanding. It also helps to resolve conflicts. Uh, the other thing that it does is it helps you to grow spiritually together. So communication is where you're able to... Um, um, you know, share or discuss what you have learned, what you're reading, what God's telling you, um, you know, what you're, what, what God's putting inside your heart. It happens only through communication. So you grow together, you build each other's faith, you build each other, you nurture one another in spiritual encouragement. Okay. That's also a way to, uh, communication is important because it helps to protect your marriage. What happens to a marriage that's, that has no communication? It's a dead marriage, right? Is it a dead marriage? Yeah, because in marriage, you, you would like to share your thoughts, your feelings, your love, your affection to one another. And if you don't do that, what happens? It's a, it's a temptation to wander off into some other kind of an entanglement or into another kind of a companionship. Right, So keeping your communication open and strong helps you to protect your marriage. Okay, Next one is uh, to build up and bring up children. So how parents communicate will, will really, um, the way a husband and wife communicates has an impact on the way that the children grow up and the children learn. Right. So if you, go, if you look back, um, look back at your own homes. Okay. Think of the way that your parents communicated when there was a conflict. So I'm sure all of you know how. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to bring that up, but you'll know how. And that has an impact on the way you you will communicate, or you will, uh, you know, you've understood about life. For example, if you've had a home where parents, whenever they've had conflicts, they actually, you know, move back into the room and then they talk about it and then they come. Right. So you know, okay, something's happening there. They talk about their issues. Or you may have come from a home where, where parents are yelling and shouting at each other, bringing you in the midst of it. And then you begin to see, you know, you kind of have an impact. It's like, I never want to get married because, uh, uh, because conflict is all about people yelling and shouting. So it has an impact, right? So it matters that we are able to build that open communication. Um, but it's also important because it helps you to cherish memories. I'm sure when you all are all sitting together here, you'll talk about your school days or you'll talk about your childhood. No, you don't do that. Nobody does that. Don't have the time for it. Yeah, you talk about, yeah, about last year or, you know, oh, wow, this happened the last time or this was nice or this wasn't nice. Spend together, yeah. Or we went for this trip, and this is what you tried. So what? What that is cherishing memories. So when you communicate, you're actually cherishing one another. You're reliving those memories that actually help you. Okay. All right. Any questions before we move on? As we are uh, discussing about communication. 
and uh, when it comes to this uh, resolving issues so like what uh, how to communicate like if there's some issue happened and uh, if the other person like not only in marriage but even with friendship if that other person got uh, angry or if they get offended and they just walk off and as we are trying to approach and uh, talk to communicate but if they are not willing to mm. talk Mm. Uh, so how we can resolve and how we can communicate in that situation okay very good question so the question uh, mainly is if, when you when there is a struggle with with uh, a conflict with someone if the other person is not willing to talk uh, how do you resolve communication okay so um the first the first and foremost thing is when there is a conflict uh, which we'll again look at it later. But when there is a conflict, what is the biggest emotion that happens? Hurt or anger, maybe, right? So, hurt or anger is what generally raise, rises up when you're in a conflict. Uh, now, because we all have different ways of dealing with conflict, sometimes when people are hurt or anger, they uh, react differently. So, so this is new this is something we learned you either react like a rhinoceros what is a rhinoceros you know you know what rhinos are right they head on right they will come charge on you they will make a statement they will really show you that they're angry okay some people react like a rhinoceros or some people react like a hedgehog you know what a hedgehog or a porcupine uh, and what is it it withdraws but what happens? It's got those pri uh, prickly spikes that you go touch it, waddle it, it'll release one and shoots one, and that will really hurt. Okay, so that's how um, we may we may respond in either two ways. Either we're very very uh, aggressive and straight, or we withdraw. Correct? These are generally the two ways. Now, these are just patterns of how people deal with conflicts. Now, suppose you are dealing with someone who's a porcupine or who's a hedgehog, they will withdraw, right? And you may be one, like a rhinoceros, who wants to uh, iron out things then and there. So first and foremost is to understand that maybe people don't react to conflicts the same way that you do, all right? And so when you know that there is a porcupine there, you know that you have to give them time to cool off. Right? You may need to give them time. They may not be willing to talk to you openly like you're ready. So giving them that time and space to cool off. And that's how you understand them and say, okay, I understand that you're in that space like that. And I want to give you that space and time. So after giving them that space and time, inviting them, say, hey, you know, I really want to sort this issue out with you. I want to invite you for a conversation. Okay? Now, you may say, what if even then they don't want to? Okay, so, and, and if you look at it, a lot of us do that. A lot of us try and sweep our problems and conflicts under the carpet and say, never mind, let's not talk about it. But it is a healthy uh, pattern to talk about issues. So not all people may be ready, and you're right about it, but you've done your part to invite them for a conversation, saying, you know, I really want to sort this out with you. I want to... Um, ensure that we're we're okay with this and I want to talk about it. But there's nothing you can do if they refuse, right? And you say, I respect whatever you think, but hey, let me tell you, hey, you know, whenever you want to talk about it, I'm ready for it. Or if you think I've done something to hurt you, I apologize and I would like to share it. So that's the best that you can do. You can't make them sit and talk to you. Okay? All right. Any other questions? Is it there for how we react is there also like a from our side uh have to work on how we react like if we are if our reaction is like rhino hmm. uh, do we have to work on ourselves or okay. uh, or we if we are the other type uh -huh. still we have to work on ourselves yeah so is it needed yes yeah so that's what we're going to be talking about so uh, being a rhino and a hedgehog it's good to understand but both um, spectrums or both, uh, what do you say, both kinds 
are not always very healthy because when you are a rhino, you are either yelling, screaming, saying things that are hurtful, okay? Or if you are a hedgehog, you are not saying anything. You are you're giving the other person the silent treatment. So these are things you need to work on, and that's what we're going to look at, okay? All right. Now, in communication, um, there are three... Uh, I, I'd like to place three aspects to it. There are mainly two just written here, but I just want to bring up a third one here, okay? There are three aspects to it. There is a listening, okay? There is an expression or a talking, and there is what we call the feedback, okay? So there is a listening, there is a expression or a talking or a speaking, and there is a feedback. So, um, it, you know, the fact that God gave you all gave us two ears and one mouth. What does it mean? To listen more and talk less, right? Especially in conversations, it is to listen more and talk less, okay? So in listening, the goal, what is the goal? We always have to ask ourselves when we're listening, what is the goal? Is it to understand or is it to, is it to listen to understand or listen to answer? It's listen to understand, okay? When we're listening to answer, then it becomes, it doesn't become a conversation. It becomes a debate. It becomes a fight. But when you are trying to resolve conflicts, you're listening to understand and not listening to um, answer, okay? So if you look at Proverbs 18, 13, it says, listen before you answer. If you don't, you are being stupid and insulting. So it's a very direct uh um, you know, uh, word that's been that's been given. So listen, listening um, uh, is important. So when you're listening, what are you trying to do? There's a difference between listening and hearing. Okay, listening is that you're listening to understand. Hearing is you hear something and then it immediately goes out. Actually, a lot of things you hear you don't remember. Right? It's what you listen to and understand is what actually stays retained. So when you're listening, you are attempting to understand. So what are some of the skills that's needed when you're listening? Okay. So one of the, uh, and, and there are a couple of things over here. It is one is to be attentive. What does being attentive mean? Being attentive is you are actually paying um, undivided attention to the person. Sometimes you probably know that people look like they're listening, but they're actually not listening. Right? And especially when they have those glassy eyes and uh, or they've gone off somewhere else. No, that's true, right? No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, so uh, being paying attention is just not is just not keeping your phone or your pens or and whatever you're doing down, but it's also paying constant attention to the other person. Okay. You know, one way how I know people are listening, I quickly ask, what did I just say? And then, you know, they don't know what to, then I know, okay, they haven't listened. So would you like to listen once again? Okay. So being attentive, okay, paying that attention without, and, and in marriage, uh, often there are things that come in the midst, in our midst, that is, Either our phones, our laptops, our work, our children, uh, busyness, a lot of things that that come. So good listening is when you're actually paying undivided attention. The next thing is to being open. What does open mean? mean is that we're not jumping to conclusions even before something is said. Right? So jumping to conclusions is even before two, three, the whole sentence is over, we've said no. This is how you are, right? That we're jumping to conclusions or coming to the outcome of what it is. So it is, you're, you're, you're telling yourself, okay, I will listen to the whole thing. And one exercise that I do between couples is I give them like a paper or a book and say, okay, when you all are talking, the person who has the book has the permission to talk. Only once you finish, do you give it to the other person and, and then they talk. So you can't interrupt in between. Okay, so that's being open, being patient, listening without interruptions, without coming in between and saying, no, 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 but, but, no, no, that's not how it is, but, but, right, that's interruption. So waiting till they have finished that. Next is be clear of what was said. 
sometimes what we say, um, we ourselves don't have clarity of what we're saying. And we get our clarity when we are talking, right? And so some when you when you understand that it's it's good, it's good to trace back and say, hey, you know, this is what I was trying to communicate. So being clear of what is said. So you either summarize, you repeat, you know, so that you can be understood. Then being responsive. So when you're listening, what are you doing? You nod your head, you say, Oh, really? Ah. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you're being responsive. And last is being sensitive. What is being sensitive? Now I may be talking to you and I'm and I'm saying, you know, I'm very, very happy today. Do you see the happiness on my face? You don't, right? So you're sensitive to the body language. And you can ask, you can say, you know, you say you're happy, but then the, your face doesn't show. All right, really? Yeah, right? So being sensitive to body language. So somebody may be saying, like, especially in, uh, you know, uh, between couples when, when there is a conflict happening, the husband will ask the wife, uh, what's wrong? Nothing. From that itself, you know that there is something wrong, right? So listen a lot more, uh, not just to the words, but also to the body language, okay? So um, you can take some time and do that exercise and listening skills questionnaire to really find out how well a listener you are, okay? You can do it at your time and at your pace and uh, so that you understand how good a listener you are, okay? Great. We are uh, at the end of one hour. Let's break. Uh, let's stop for a break and resume in 10 minutes.